Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badgerworks. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is a tank. It's a World War I tank, a Mark A Whippet. No laughing at the back. <laughs> and uh, this is going to be part of our uh, Behind the Lines diorama. So, let's get out of the box, take a look at it, and then get on with it. So yes, this is the uh, the Mark A Whippet Medium Tank by Mhar. Never actually had one of their models before, so we'll see what it's like. One seventy second scale. Uh, let's get it out of the box. See what we've got. Uh, oh, that's everything. So I'm uh, anticipating on this being fairly simple, and at first glance it looks like it is. Let's take it out of the bag. Oh. Now, interestingly enough, they've put everything in the bag, which is kind of strange, because normally they, you know, put this stuff in separate, but, oh no, there's another bag with the decals in it, but never mind. Uh, oh, oh, that bit wasn't attached. That looks like the main hole. All right, let's get rid of that. Uh, uh, well, at first glance, it doesn't look... Terrible. There's not a huge amount of detail on it, I have to say. But, you know, what do you expect at this scale? Uh, don't know quite what's going on there. I don't know if you can see that, but that hole looks like it's been chewed. But never mind. <laughs> uh, decals. Um, See, they've got these the, the markings here, which we will probably paint those on rather than... But obviously, we may use some of the others. Let's have a look at the instructions that are very, very simple. Uh, Whippet was designed by Sir William Tritton of Foster & Co. as a pursuit tank to exploit breakthroughs made by heavy Mark IV tanks. The fighting compartment for the crew was three or four in the rear with twin engines in front. The armoured fuel tank projected forward between the front horns. Hmm. Separate engine drove each set of tracks through its own gearbox and transmission. I bet that was fun. <laughs> Steering was affected by accelerating one and retarding the other at the same time. Three machine guns. Armour between quarter and half inch thick. 14 tonnes. Twin Tyler 45 brake horsepower petrol engines as used on London buses in the day. <laughs> so it's basically a battle bus. Anyway, um, let's have a look. Uh, yes, as suspected, this is going to be fairly simple. Um, okay. Right. Might as well make a start on it, I suppose. Oh. Right, just pop those down there. So we've already got part of the hull. Uh... I, I feel the urge to clean up this hole because it's, yeah. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I don't know if they drilled that out or what, but it's... Yeah, that's, that's a bit weird, but still. Never mind. It's like, oh, the other holes are fine. And it, it's okay from the inside, look. It's the outside that's the problem. Anyway, um, let me get some of these bits off frame, clean them up, and then we'll make a start. Right, I have just spent a considerable amount of time cleaning up mould lines and other things, um, which this model unfortunately has a lot of. There's also the fact of this hole here, which I think I mentioned before looks like it's been chewed. Um, but anyway, that's it is what it is. Uh, I also had to make a few modifications here and there, um, just like test fitting pieces together and a lot of it doesn't go together very well. Like this part here um, really didn't want to go together very well. Uh, and what I've actually done is I shaved a bit off the front, um, pointy thing, I shaved a bit off the front here and also uh, I, ew, if you can, I don't know if you can see that, hang on. I also beveled this back edge here because it was the plastic was like as thick as that and it just wouldn't go together properly. Um, but I think 
we are now in something of a position where we can try and start putting some of this together which should be hilarious so glue um, now uh, we want this bit here first see this again is not terrific um, the hole was almost closed up so I've managed to you know open it up now I've got to be careful here because this these guns are actually different there are um, you've got two types of gun and there are three of one and one of the other so you've got those three and cleaning the mold lines up on those was fun and then you've got this one here which you can see actually has a different um, shape to it and that's the one we want for this bit here so we'll pop that through there because that actually wouldn't fit through the hole uh, <laughs> before now the weird thing is where's it gone there it is it has this little this is the only one that has it it has this little cap that goes over the back and i don't know if that's supposed to be so that you can like move the gun or something i, I really don't know but i don't really think it needs it i mean I'm, i'll probably put it on anyway but i don't really think it needs it but i'm going to do the gun try and get the gun straight would be nice oh go on turn around a bit there we go so let's just get a drop of glue on there and I'm also going to put a bit around the outside to try and get rid of some of these little fluffy bits now I'm going to position this gun I'm just going to have it with the muzzle facing up like that because contrary to popular belief if you leave a gun in a pintle mount like that it will not drop muzzle down it will drop muzzle up because all the weight is at the back so it'll actually go like that not like that anyway that's the point uh so that's that and then what we need to do is put this bit on here so there is the tiniest bit of plastic holding those two pieces together it's i'm just waiting for it to break quite frankly but this bit should help hold it all together oh Drop the thing now. Uh, so that goes like that, but it also has to go. Oh dear. Behind this, I think. Right, hang on, let's get a bit of glue on there first. over the top like that but you can see this does not fit together terribly well so I think we're going to have to kind of try and finagle it all together We enjoy a bit of finagling here on this channel. Oh, this went together quite well earlier when I was chest fitting it. No, it doesn't want to go at all. I think we're going to need some filler on this. <laughs> all right, let's get a bit of glue down this end and try and get those two bits together. But this is definitely one of these things where you have to kind of like melt it together. Right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rest of this. Oh, those guns need to go in there, don't they? I forgot about that. Right, you go in there. Or in the 
back as it were. That goes in the back there. so I don't forget to do it in a minute because if I don't do it now that's it once the whole sides go together you that's it you're doomed so I'm just wondering is that supposed to go it doesn't look like it's going through far enough if you look at this one on the front here that goes through a lot further than the one on the back. Hmm. Oh well. We'll see how it goes. Uh, right, now we need to put this bit on here. So this needed a lot of trimming and things as well to fit. So, and I say, I think there's going to be a requirement for a significant amount of filler. Because none of these parts really seem to go together that well. Right, that goes like that. And this piece goes on the back. And stands off for some reason. I don't know if that's some kind of like a bumper thing or something like on a train. You know like the, the bump stops there on a train. I don't know if it's a similar sort of thing. But anyway. That goes like that and then we can put that to one side for a second. Now we need to glue these two bits together. Because these go on the front. Uh, now I've got to make sure I get this the right way around. That goes like that. Oh. There's not many parts, but it's still moderately fiddly. That goes like that. That goes like that. Now, this goes on the front here. Oh dear. Like that. Let's see if we can get this glued in place. So this is one of the nice things about these kind of weld bond type adhesives. I mean, this is the solvent that I'm using, but it's the fact that like that, I can push that together and it kind of melts the plastic slightly and fills the gaps. So, right, that goes like that. Okay, now we've got to try and get this exhaust on, uh, which is that one. Although my son actually mentioned this when he saw this kit. Apparently one of the big issues with these is because the engines are at the front and uh, obviously these are the exhausts. This exhaust has a tendency or had a tendency to blow smoke straight into the driver's compartment. <laughs> which I thought makes sense. It's like why do they not run the tailpipe down to the back? But eh, whatever. Uh, right now this bit is very fiddly but we'll see what we can do get on there oh that actually went on fairly well straight away I'm 
like that. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Oh, he says, as he didn't do that. Oh, come on. <laughs> Talk about yourselves for a minute. That's it. Alright, now we want this bit to go in. Oh, wait for this to go twang. One of them is going to go twang, I know it is. like that okay all right let's put that down for a second Whew. uh we can do the tracks as well while we're waiting for these to set up a bit so these are one of the few bits that actually have locating pins so these just pop together like this. I'm going to say the assembly on this is the easy bit. Well, I say the easy bit. This is the, you know, the the not so complicated bit. It's going to be the painting of it that's going to be the uh, the main thrust of this video. Stop laughing at the back. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all this stuff set up for a minute or two and then I'm going to try and finagle that top on. Right, let's see if we can get this on. This is going to be hilarious. Q swearing. <laughs> Might have, to, might have to bleep a few bits out on it. Oh, I might still have to trim a bit off of that, actually. Oh. Right, you need to go behind there. Oh, that actually has gone on... ...relatively okay. We're going to need some clamps for this, I think. Right, so that... I have to pinch this together while I glue it because it's not really sitting in the right spot. I had to sand a lot, quite a lot off at the bottom here to get it to fit anywhere near in the right place. So, yeah, it's... Um, It's not ideal. And it's like this top part here, it just doesn't, nothing wants to fit together properly. It's all kind of there, but, but not, if you know what I mean. Right, okay, so, uh, is that going to be wide enough to go on there, we ask ourselves? Because I want to put that like that to hold that down. You never have too many clamps, especially great big ones like this. And I want to try and jam that in there. Have I got another one of those? I've got another one of those somewhere. I've just got to find it. I bought two of these clamps these Wolfcraft clamps. I think they came from B&Q or somewhere, or somewhere like that. And um, I really should go back and get more because they're actually really, I don't use them very often, but when you need them, they're really handy. And now I can't find any more of them. 
Let me see if I've got something I can use to clamp down this front. I think that might do it. Yeah, that will hold that. Right, let's get some glue on there. I'll say the nice thing about using this type of adhesive, using like these um, solvents, is uh, you can clamp it like that and it will basically kind of melt it all together. So. Oh, except when it does that. <laughs> Let's put it on from the front. Let's see if that might, that's probably a bit better. Right. I need to try and do something with this bit here. Because I don't really want to sit here and hold it, but I might have to. Talk about shells for a minute. Right, that's <laughs> suitably clamped up, so we'll just leave that and uh, let's put that under there for a minute. That's it. We'll leave that to set up for a while and then we'll stick the tracks on. Uh, once I've got the tracks on, then we can start looking at priming, uh, uh, filling some of these gaps. Right, well, it's glued together. I did manage to get a big fingerprint on the side of it, which I'm not very happy about, but we'll sort that out in a minute. Um, but yes, there are some gaps, so we're going to use this uh, Mr. Dissolve putty to fill some of those in. That's a lovely big gap there. I wonder if I should try and glue that and clamp it together. Yeah, I might come back to that one. Now the trick is with this stuff is to put it on and uh, let it set up for a while and then uh, you can take it off with a, a cotton bud so you don't actually have to sand anything I'll show you in a second that doesn't look too bad right now what we do is uh, I've just got a bit of isopropyl alcohol in this little pot and we just take a cotton bud Put it in the alcohol and then you can just wipe it off you see you have to kind of work at it a bit but it will come off and it just stays where you need it to be Which is quite handy for a thing like this because it's got all these little rivet details and whatever else and so the last thing you want is to have it all you know to have to try and sand all that off and end up sanding all the rivets off and again if you get a bit in the wrong place like that you can just wipe it off you see and so you have to kind of scrub at it a little bit sometimes but it works surprisingly well trouble is in this point is again because of these little rivet details they're tearing the cotton bud to pieces <laughs> but that's all right see just like that so I'll give this a clean up finish off filling up all these little gaps and then uh we can think about putting the tracks on and putting some primer on it. Right, that's got a coat of uh, primer on it. I just used the um, 
the high coat uh, oh god there we go uh, high coat gray primer i use this stuff all the time it's it's really good for models and miniatures as well so they're not sponsors or anything but <laughs> they can if they want to i buy enough of the stuff um but yeah so that's uh, i primed it i haven't put the tracks on yet because i figured i'd put the tracks on uh once it's all painted i think that'll work a lot better uh, but to start with, we're going to use a coat of this um, XF62 Olive Drab. Right, the next step, we're going to use this um, Vallejo Khaki. We're basically using very similar colours to the ones we used on the figures. But I'm going to use this to do some highlighting um, and panel shading and things like that. So what I'll do is I'll go over the whole thing with this and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, I just figured while I was doing this, I'd talk a little bit more about the actual airbrushing technique that I use. Um, I dare say there are way better ways of doing it, but it's how I do it. Um, so the trick is, and I've made a mistake now, so I took my glasses off, um, is to, it's control of the brush. So it's a very thin mix of, of paint. It's uh, it's about a 90% a, a uh thinner more than it's more thinner than paint um and the trick is i find is first of all get the brush ready to go like that just give it a little you know just kind of have a little practice with it you see like that and then what you can do if you want is just literally bring it onto the model like that i do that quite a lot sometimes um and just just basically spray like that i'm trying to keep this under the camera but i'm also trying to look at what i'm doing um and just kind of work it around. You gotta remember at this stage, all you're doing is shading. You're not, um, this is not a color coat, this is a shading coat. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just going over the areas that would naturally be hit by light or would naturally be lighter. So what we're doing is we're creating the effect of rather than darkening the panel lines, we're lightening the field of the panel, if that makes sense. So let me show you a bit more on this side. So again, it's like, if you just stop now and again, give the brush a little, that keeps the brush. The, the, one of the problems a lot of people have is they say, oh, it spits and sputters. Now, there's a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, who's been a graphic artist for decades. Um, and he does a lot of airbrush work, but he's doing like actual like artwork for, you know, um, uh, you know, food packaging and you know whatever else that's basically his his bread and butter if you'll excuse the pun um but one of the things he talked to me about a lot was you'd see these old boys in in the sort of you know 50s 60s and 70s using airbrushes and they would constantly be picking the tips of the airbrush you know whenever they weren't painting if they were just sitting chatting they'd be constantly picking at the tips of the, and it was basically to keep the, keep the the needle tip clean and what happens is when you're spraying, you get a paint build up on the on the nozzle. And that's what makes it spit and sputter. And this is why it helps occasionally to stop and just give it a quick because that just cleans it off. But what you can also do is if you take, hang on, ugh, take yourself a cotton bud, dip it in your thinner or IPA or whatever you're using, and just give it a little. And you see that cleans the paint off the tip. Stop laughing at the back. Um, and makes it spray cleaner. So there are things you can do. If you're having trouble spraying, it's probably because there's dry paint on the end of the, of the needle. Um, now you can buy all these, you know, flow improvers and da, 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 da. I, I don't use any of those. Uh, I don't know if they work or not. They might be fantastic. I might be missing out on something here, but... I've never seen the need because it's just little things like that will help. So let's go back to this. So again, give it a quick little squirt and then in we go. So all I'm doing is I'm just pulling the, the, the trigger back very slightly 
and then just giving it a little bit of air. And you just kind of work it until the paint starts to come out. You see? It does take some control. It does take some practice. But that's what it's all about, is practice. No one is born knowing how to do this stuff. Everybody has to practice. Everyone has to learn. So don't think that because you can't pick an airbrush up and use it instantly that you are some kind of failure. Because you're not. It's, you know, I mean, I'm still rubbish at airbrushing, but I'm getting better. Sometimes things come out really well, and other times I just can't get on with it at all. And I, <laughs> But it's figuring out what the problem is and how to fix it. Um, and that takes practice. Uh, what you can do, if you want to just practice on things, because a lot of people you'll see will spray on paper to practice, uh, which is fine. But the problem I find with that is the fact that paper is absorbent. Plastic isn't. So if your paint mixture is really thin and wet, you spray it on paper and it will soak in and it will stay where you put it. You spray it on plastic and it just goes and just goes everywhere. So the best thing I find is get some old kits or something like that and practice on those. So anyway, hopefully that's helped. We're nearly done with this bit now. Right, and there you go, you see. So, uh, yes, hopefully that's helped a few of you. Uh, I just realised it's something I've not really talked about a lot before. But anyway, yeah, see how you get on with that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our green, our main colour, and we're going to do a really thin coat over the top of this to blend it all in. Right, so now we're back to our XF62 Olive Drab. And uh, what I've got in the brush is a... A very thin mix. It's slightly thicker than the uh, than the mix that we just used. So whereas that one was like 90% thinner, this is about sort of 80% thinner. So it's a little bit thicker. But what we're going to do now is just go... Um, oh, cocktail sticks come out. Hang on. Talk about yourselves. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go very lightly over the model and just blend in those highlights. Now the thing to remember when you're doing these, uh, this like filter stage is that when you first spray the paint on, you will see that the highlights almost disappear. But what will happen is as the paint dries, they'll start to come back. So if you look at the back there, where I've already done it, you can see those highlights are starting to come back. So although you're putting it on really light, don't panic if it looks like oh my god i put too much on because you know it'll probably work out fine but just go thin because you can always add more paint it's very difficult to take it off again so again here just go just mist over it and you kind of want to get it so that the the, the highlight or the shading kind of disappears and then stop and then let it dry and then see what it looks like because you can always go back, as I say, and add more layers afterwards. But you can see already how that's starting to come back and it's giving us that nice kind of mottled effect. So, um, yeah. Just don't be impatient, which is easy for me to say. I'm the most impatient person out there. Um, but yeah, so let me carry on and do the rest of this. And you can see, hopefully, what I'm doing. Like I say, it's a case of just go over it until the highlights almost disappear and then leave it and let it dry. Because I say, you can always come back and add more layers. You can't take them off again. If you overdo it, you'll have to start again. I must admit, these front panels, it's almost pointless because we're going to be painting over those with a different colour anyway, but never mind. go now we'll let that dry for a few minutes and then um, you'll see the difference 
Right, there we go. So uh, I've just I've just hit, you'll notice a couple of dark spots on that because I've just hit a couple of bits again that I missed. That's what I say, you can just go back and look at it and you know, if there's any spots that you need to do again or whatever, then you can. But uh, it's better to add more later than to put too much on and try and take it off. But you can see there, hopefully the light's catching that all right. But it's now highlighted all those panels quite nicely. And uh, it looks a lot more varied and interesting than just a flat color coat. So uh, yeah, there you go. So I'll give this a few minutes to dry and then we'll go on from there. Right, uh, so I went in for dinner earlier and I come back out and I can't remember what I said to you. Um, but anyway, <laughs> suffice it to say what I've done uh, just off camera is I've given it a couple of coats of, uh, where's it gone? This um, Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish just to seal it. And I've also masked up the front, as you can see, and I've also masked up the tracks because I'm going to do the red and white stripes. But I think I might want to chip that. So we're going to start with a coat of flat white XF2. But before we do that, I'm going to give it a quick blast of, oh, where is it? This extra firm hairspray. This just happens to be one from Sainsbury's. Um, I did a whole video on different hairsprays and what for and all the rest of it before. But uh, basically it just allows us to chip the paint. So I'll just give it a quick spritz of this. Right, we'll just give those a second to dry and then we'll put some paint on it. as well. One of the things I like doing when I'm doing this is even though you could just blast the paint on and be done with it, I like to try and stay off the, the masking tape as much as possible. It's just good practice for like airbrush control so it's uh it's a good idea when you're doing things you know use everything you can to to practice your airbrushing anyway there we go uh so i'll give that a minute to dry then i'll mask it up and paint the red stripe on right so more masking has happened and now we're going to use this uh xf7 flat red to do the stripes on the hull and the wheels uh, or tracks, you know, you know what I mean. These things, big wobbly things on the side. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> just shush. take this masking tape off let's see how this goes oh there you go that looks all right there uh that's that let's do these that's nearly straight <laughs> that's fine it'll do oh that one's not too bad <laughs> neither of them are really particularly straight but never mind you gotta remember these would have been painted on with a brush by some bloke who probably's owned about top tape me every six months anyway um okay so that's those done uh now what we want to do next is actually do a little bit of chipping on these so where's me chipping brush gone Right, so I think what we're going to do now is um, we're going to do some paint chipping. So uh, I've got my little 
chipping brush at the ready. But we're also going to put some decals on, I think. If um, I need to go through the plans and see which ones we actually need to put on. But it's probably easier to do both at the same time. So uh, up here, you can't really see it. I've got my little wax burner going with some hot water, warm water in it. And uh, that's what we're going to use for this. Now, I've just got the decal sheet out. And it was in a plastic bag, if you remember, which I was slightly vexed over. But the thing that gets me is they've done something, and I actually like it when they do this. The, the tissue paper that they put over it, they've actually taped it down. And to me, it's just like, well, if you've gone to the effort of taping that down, why then put it in a bag? I mean, if nothing else, you think just to save them some money and an extra packaging step. You know, it's like this was already in the plastic bag with everything else. So anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just me ranting about plastic bags. You know what I'm like? I get people make comments about it sometimes. Oh, we're going about plastic bags again. Yeah, funnily enough, because um, I don't like unnecessary waste. Not because I'm some do-good of bleeding heart liberal, but because it annoys me from a financial standpoint, if nothing else. Anyway, that's uh, <laughs> enough away with such things. Um, right, let's have a look at the plan and figure out where these got to go. Right, uh, it doesn't actually tell you what any of these decal sets are actually for. <laughs> it just it just shows them. It shows you the placement, but it doesn't tell you what they're for, which is kind of comical. So I suppose I can put them whenever I want, really. Um, so yeah, okay. All right, what have we got here? I suppose we could use the old Firefly one just for. A bit of fun. What sets that? That's that one. Yeah, we use those ones. That'll do. And the nice thing is, the way these are set out, I can cut the whole lot out in one go, I think. Um, although, obviously, I'll have to put the actual Firefly decal somewhere other than where they show it in the plan, because... On that one, this top part doesn't have the stripes on it and it has the decal instead, but it doesn't matter. Right, so first things first, let's get this paint chipped. Now, I don't want to do a massive amount of chipping on this, just a little bit. Uh, I need a softer brush, like this one. Right. So we put some water on the brush. And then we can just come in and just wet this. And what we want is the water to soak through and under the paint to reactivate the hairspray. That's the idea. Like that. And then we take this brush here. This, is, this isn't anything special, this brush. This is an old, um, came from the works, I think. I don't, I'm not sure. But it was basically like an oil paint brush. So it has quite thick, stiff bristles. And what I did was I cut them down quite short, as you can see, so that it makes them quite stiff. Stop laughing at the back. Um, and it means you can kind of dig at it without, uh, you know, with, with some degree of control. So... Let's see how this works. I don't want to take too much off. What I'm actually doing really is kind of like pushing the ends of the bristles in. And hopefully you can see what that's doing. But it's just like creating like pin pricks in the paint. And it's more just to make it look slightly worn. I don't want it absolutely hammered, you know what I mean? And again, more around the edges where the tracks are, because that's where all the dirt and everything would mainly get flung about. So that will probably do as much as that. So let's do this front as well. Oh, we need to wet it down first. And again, we're going to focus more on the bottom side because that's you know obviously closer to the ground and 
and obviously on the front edge here where it's sort of pushing through you know bushes and barbed wire and whatever else so that's what we're really aiming at but just like that you see And we'll just kind of drag this across the surface to create some scratches. Like that. And we'll do a bit on the top as well, but just not quite as much. Getting around the edges and that, and just just a little bit. There we go. That'll do. Right, we're going to start with this one that goes on the track, and you may notice that I've actually cut that very close because the space where it needs to go is actually quite. Um, there's quite a lot of rivets and things. So I've cut it as close as I can just to uh, make life a little bit easier. I'll just pop that in the water for a second. Now, get the old Mr. Mark on here. Needs a little bit. Right, let's see if we can get this off of here. He says. Uh, now, which way around does that go? That goes 1x. Because it would be really annoying to put that on the wrong way around. Come here. Alright. That's nowhere near where it's supposed to be, but never mind. We shall finagle it into position. About there somewhere, I think. And we take the cotton bud. And we work it down into position. So what we want to try and do is kind of force it over those rivets so that it conforms to them. Something like that, I think. I think that actually went on rather well. Yeah, that's right. Right, onwards. Uh, now, the, the one problem, I'm not going to put all of these on, it's... You know, you don't want to sit here watching me do that. Um, the one thing is, obviously, on the the box art, the Firefly logo goes on the front here, um, which I have now painted over. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Firefly up here. I think that will work. I think that will be fine. I'll pop that up there. I'll pop this one on and then I'll put the rest on off camera just so that to save your sanity. I mean, you know, if people, if any of you like watching me sitting here applying decals, then feel free to say so in the comments. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do a, like a spin off, like one of those, um, what's it, AMSR or whatever it's called videos, but just me putting decals on. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that will work there, that'll be fine. Let's try and straighten it up a bit. Something like that, I think. Now, let's see if we can get that to actually stay put. Uh, is that straight? Uh, that's near enough. 
Good enough for government work, as Bunny Kitten always says. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll get the rest of these put on, and then I'll give it another coat of the uh, of the, the gloss polyurethane, and then uh, we'll come back and do some weathering on it. Right, so it's the next day. Uh, I did do a little bit off camera. Uh, I just painted the uh, the tracks with this um, Citadel chainmail, which I believe is now called Bolter or something. But anyway, um, I just brush painted those, so that was pretty quick, and then give them a quick lick of uh, of varnish. And what we're going to do now is start some weathering. So I have here some uh, Crawford and Black uh, yellow ochre oil paint um, this came out of a set you've seen me use this before it's a, a good set you can get from the works uh, well I think they still sell them and the nice thing is with this paint is it's <laughs> it actually doesn't have a lot of oil in it it's quite pigment heavy it's not really good as oil paint but it's great for doing washes and things and that's what we're going to do so uh, let me just move these for a second I have here a little cake tin these are great for this sort of thing. You can buy them um, like from the pound shop and places like that in like packs of 50. Uh, and they're, they're great for this kind of stuff. So we'll just squirt a little bit of that in there. And we will add some white spirit to thin it down. This is just, oh, if I can get it under the camera. This is just cheap stuff. Uh, this actually came from um, Wilco's, which I believe is now closed, unfortunately. Oh, child protective cap that I can't get off. Need to get a five-year-old to take it off for me. <laughs> uh, so we'll just put some white spirit in there. Just a little bit to start with. And now we just take a brush and just give this a good mix up to thin it down. I want this to look more like dusty than muddy, if that makes sense. So that's why I'm using the yellow ochre rather than something like a burnt sienna. That might be a bit thick, actually. We'll see. Right. Now, what we're going to do is just apply this fairly liberally. Yeah, this might be a bit thick. I'm going to put a bit more thinner in that. And we're going to put this basically all over. And it's going to look like a horrible mess. But it will all work out in the end. He says with supreme confidence. Right. Kind of like that. So... Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know whether to leave that in or spin it off into its own little video. But anyway, um, where was I? Yes, washes. So we're going to do these. Uh, that's, this is actually almost dried already. <laughs> but yeah, we'll carry on and we'll do these. Um, do these as well. Because again, what we've got here is we want to get onto this, these tracks and get them nicely sort of, like I said, not, uh, not muddy as such as just like dusty. So we'll put this on and we'll let it dry. And then um, we'll start uh, taking it off. So I'll get on and do the rest of these and dry them off and then we'll go from there. Right, this has dried out fairly successfully. Um, I've actually decided I'm going to leave the tracks. Let me show you quickly. I think I'm going to leave these tracks as they are. Um, I don't think I'm really going to do anything else to them. They look pretty good, just like that. I mean, I'm going to do some more stuff to them, but I'm not going to do anything to this. Um, but there is quite a lot on the, on the body that needs to be sorted out. So um, I've got a little pot here with some white spirit in it. And the idea is you just use whatever 
is necessary. So I've just got a cotton bud that I've just damped with some, and you can just sort of help get the worst of it off. I'm just gonna take a little bit off like that. But then what I'm also gonna do is um, use a variety of brushes and things to uh, to kind of streak it. So, for example, this is a good one. Uh, this is a, a fan brush, and you do the same thing. Just wet it with some thinner. Take most of it off on a bit of tissue, and then just very lightly, and that just kind of streaks it all in you know appropriate directions so the same on here just just like that you see very simple and when it dries it'll um, create a nice sort of streaky dusty effect probably work even better if I did keep hitting the camera with <laughs> with the uh, with the brush but still um, but yeah so I'll go over and do all of this and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so I'm gonna do some staining and things on the tracks now. Um, they look pretty good as they are, but we can do better. So I've got three different panel line colors here from Tamiya. Uh, so I've got brown, dark brown, and black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by going over pretty much the whole thing with the brown. Just to get us started but what i'm really using this for because you can see this really isn't making much difference but this is more to provide us a base for the other colors because i don't want those to be too dark so for example you see i've just covered that if i now use this dark brown it basically tones it down a lot and basically makes it not as harsh as it were but still gives us some nice definition on all these lovely rivets on the track. Like that, you see. And I'll do the same on the front here. Well, all over it, really. I'll just do a bit of it just to show you. So again, just basically getting it all over the whole thing. Like that. And then again, coming back in with the brown and just hitting various spots just to create some contrast, like that. And then for the black, I'm not gonna use that very much at all, just a little bit. So I'm gonna put a touch on here and I'm also gonna use it to create some shadows around the edge of the track. So like that just to kind of define that track a little better. So I'll get on and do the rest of this and then uh, we'll see what it looks like. Right, well I've, um, I think we're nearly there actually. I've, uh, I've you know, dried all this off, given it a coat of, uh, of lacquer, the, um, where's it gone? The uh, high coat matte lacquer, this is really good stuff. Um, just to seal it all. And the last step, just before I think we can call this done, is uh, I'm just using a graphite pencil here. I don't know if you've ever done this before. It's quite a neat little trick. Um, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm just going over the raised parts of the track with this uh, graphite pencil. And it's quite a, a subtle effect. But what it does, it just adds a bit of, a bit of shine um, to the uh, to the raised parts of the track. It's like where those would obviously be in contact with the ground the most. 
and so they tend to be sort of worn and shiny so if you just go over it with a graphite pencil it just kind of brings that shine back it's uh it's actually very useful for all kinds of things so if you're doing anything with like metal railings or ladders or anything like that uh, once you've done all your weathering and everything if you add some of this graphite pencil to it it kind of makes it look shiny and worn so I'll uh, I'll finish this off and then I think we can um, wrap this up I don't know if you can hopefully you can see how that's uh, it is it <laughs> I'm looking at it through the camera and it doesn't look any different but in in <laughs> to my eyes it does um, but hopefully the camera is picking up what it's doing but I say I'll go around and do all the rest of these and then uh, I think we can possibly consider this done Actually, one last thing, I suppose, before I can say we're finished. I suppose I'll stick the tracks on. <laughs> um, uh, I've also taken, I've done a couple of little bits. I just did the exhausts uh, with some um, German red brown, the Vallejo. And I also put a bit of uh, flat black on the guns just to, you know, make them look a bit more gunny, as it were. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, Revel contactor to put the, uh, to put the, uh, the tracks on because I think that will be a better fit. So I'll just put a bit of glue there and there and in the hole. And we can pop this on. I don't want to handle this too much if I can avoid it because of the, um, the graphite. Because the thing is, if I seal the graphite, it will lose the effect so it's it kind of has to just stay as it is but it's okay just as long as you don't touch it too much uh does that look straight to you i'm not sure if that's actually straight or not then again nothing else on this model straight so <laughs> why should these be any different anyway um right do this one pop that on Right, and there we go. And so I think we can uh, we can wrap this up now. And here is our finished article. Uh, I'm quite pleased with how this came out, all things considered. I've never built a kit from MHAR before, as far as I can remember, uh, and it wasn't terribly impressive, but I think we've managed to get a decent result out of it. Uh, hopefully, you uh, enjoyed the little uh, airbrushing tips and techniques I left in the middle of the video. Um, and uh, of course, this will be a fine addition to our little diorama. So hopefully the next video will be the diorama itself. Either, you know, unless anything changes between now and then. Um, but until then, I'd like to take a moment to thank my top tier patrons, uh, Howard and Amy, for their continued support. And of course, all my other channel members and patrons and, and all you lovely people at home. It all is very much appreciated. Thank you. So, uh, yes, hopefully you've enjoyed this little video and I will see you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.